Praise the Lord. I am Dr. Thomas Manton IV, live from Uhuru Park. <laughs> and the Lord is doing some amazing things in our days. We're going to see a great outpouring. Uh, I'm going to prophesy for a few moments and just share some things that uh, I'm seeing happening in the nation of Kenya. Uh, things are really changing now. Say that as number one. Really, they are changing. And of course, you see all the drama and all the actions that are going on in, uh, with the unrest and the political thing and all that. It's, and it's, you know, it's ultimately intended for positive uh, change. Though in the midst of it, some other things go on, but that's the that's the way of that's the way of the, that's the nature of the beast and that's the way of the world. But uh, in 2018, I think it was the 31st of July, I did a live broadcast, and the link for that will be in the uh, description section in the YouTube channel. And uh, you put it in the Facebook thing here, I guess, and have it as a separate post also. Where well, you can click and watch what I, I was walking in the city of Nairobi in the city. And the Lord spoke and said, my son, Thomas, tell the people of Kenya that I am releasing an anti-corruption movement from heaven upon the nation of Kenya. This was six years ago in 2018. Now, at that time, I don't know. I've asked other leaders, very astute people that have followed our ministry other great leaders that said, hey, was anybody talking like that anywhere? They were like, no, we never heard any such thing. Take it back to uh, 2002. That's 22 years ago now. Just about 21 point something years ago, almost 22 years ago. It was in the month of December. Now we're in July, so you know, five months from now. 21 and a half plus years ago, the Lord said that Nairobi, Kenya, the city, will become a world-class cosmopolitan city and become the destination of millions of people and it'll be the, the light of the world will be upon it. It's phenomenal. At that time, people told me, because I wasn't, uh, I, I hadn't uh, been frequenting the city. In fact, I was only in Kenya for one day in June of 2000, which is now 24 years ago. And the Lord said, uh, the, the Moy regime will change. The government, will, there's going to be a change of government in Kenya. I prophesied it at the KICC and people told me, you know, this is kind of a dangerous thing to say things like that. I laughed, I sat back, I said, hey, I'm innocent. I didn't speak, it was God. Do you think I came all the way from London, England, to come down to Africa, my first time on the continent, to speak something like that in a third world, quote unquote, dictatorship. I mean, how would I do that? And we didn't make that prophecy very public over the years very much. I've mentioned it here and there, but I've not made a big deal about it. Because at the time, it was, it was lethal. It was vicious. It was fierce. It was dangerous on every, on every side. And of course, you know, I spoke a day and a half in the conference, whatever, and then we were back at the airport and we flew out. And we stopped at the Simba restaurant and I wrote on the, the receipt and I gave it to the manager and he looked very smitten when I wrote it. I said, Simba restaurant, order today, eat tomorrow. Because they took so long. People were missing their flights, they were going crazy in there. And then when the food came, it was absolutely horrible. I don't know if that place is still there. I don't think it's still there. Uh, I would just say it shouldn't be. Uh, it should be shuttered and closed down if it's still in operation. But I'm, I'm sure it's gone out of business long ago. You know, one of, the, one of the great things, I want to say something else. The days of progressive excellence and, and ingenuity and creative skill and brilliance need to be exhibited through the people in the nation. And not just in Kenya, but in all of Africa, not just in Africa, but in all of the world. You're supposed to provide a good service if you're in business. If you're running a restaurant, you at least need to make good food. 
at least, minimum, if you're pro providing a service, even from the government, the services need to be provided, not money stolen. In business, anyway, and in business, you're supposed to provide a good service. Yes or yes? If God gave people talent to do things, they're supposed to do it well, in Jesus' holy name. So the Lord said, there's, there's going to be a change of government. It happened within a year and a half. And then a new election was called for. And then we sent the, I sent the prophecy from, from uh, London, England, by email. Back then, there was no social media. And cell phones weren't even a thing then. In fact, uh, they were just coming on the scene, maybe. I remember a businessman from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, flew into London to see me, and he really blessed me. He bought me four brand new computers, the top of the pop, top of the the world at that time. Now they're very outdated, of course. I still have one new one in a box, in the archives in America, and it's not usable because it was on the XP platform, which I don't even think you can service that anymore. You know, Microsoft keeps changing the whole the whole thing. And it's brand new, almost very lightly used. The other one we used heavily, and the other tower PCs we used. And monitors and all kinds of stuff. And he took me to Harrods and bought me a gold Gucci watch and gave a very large tithe uh, gift from his tithe account. It was amazing. And then he bought me the newest cell phone. I think it was the Ericsson, Sony Ericsson P800, something like that, the big one, the smartphone, the one that had a flip on the bottom with the buttons. I'm just remembering that phone. That phone was awesome. And it was about a thousand pounds when it came out. You know, it was expensive back then. And like almost nobody had those. I mean, that was, that was a top shelf thing. So um, the Lord spoke over Kenya and said, I'm going to make Nairobi a world class city. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, well, not that he's going to do it alone, but people, it'll be developed into that. Now look, then the Lord spoke further in 2007. I don't know if I spoke about Rhodes in 2002. I think it was more about Mwai Kibaki coming in to become the president. It came to pass. And uh, he would be an administrator, like a Joseph. A brilliant economist and administrator. He did so much. He did so much. He got so much done. Until, of course, the great conflict in 2007 but, uh, and eight. but so what? You know, the devil is stupid and his ugly friends are defeated forever. Can I tell you, some people that are involved in evil things, God disqualifies them forever from positions they wanted. And this has happened, and I have also spoken that. So the Lord is really serious about changing things for the better. If you don't want to go through change and become a change and become a ch an agent of change and a, a solution to all kinds of situations, you're, 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 you're a loser. You're, you're like a loser in life. You have no benefit. You're what they call useless. So God, in his infinite wisdom and glory, always wants to bring change and development. You know? I don't want to start saying lift your hands, because right now I feel like I don't care who, who does what. You could sit on your hands, you could sit on your head. I don't, you know, I'm not worried about it. I just want to speak what's on the mind of God. I know what I'm doing. And everybody needs to figure it out. When, you know, for themselves. I got to tell you that. Every man for himself. You know, the Lord spoke to me, I'm going to free flow, but these are going to be great points that we can take and put these in summarized points as prophecies. I'm telling a few embellishing stories in, in between each one, but each one has a headline. The Lord said, uh, 
know what house you're taking care of and know and know which house to take care of. And the Lord spoke to me and said, some people are disjointed. They're in the wrong places. They're not growing because they're in the wrong environments. And, and the Lord said to me, he says, son, I'm going to bring a lot of people to you from everywhere. And he said, don't concern yourself of, of where they came from. Now, why would he add that embellishing thought at the end of it? I thought, there's a real meaning for that. I said, I lifted my hand to God. I said, God, I don't, I don't mind uh, that at all. I'm ready right now. Let's go. Let's get on with the, your program. But he did say that. So evidently, I'll be pretty amazed at where people come from. And I'm already seeing this happening. I'm telling you, people are coming from everywhere. There's a lot of things that I do on a daily basis that people that even know me, they don't know what I'm doing. They have no idea. They're not going to know because I'm not going to tell them or anyone. Some things are just private and they, they're happening that are so glorious. I don't have to share them with anyone. I've had the, the most lengthy meetings and the most amazing, incredible, uh, uh, I hate the word incredible because really people say it's incredible and incredible like it's good. Do you know incredible means, I-N means not. So if you say the word incredible, you're really saying not credible. It's a disgusting word. It's wrong. It's absolutely erroneous uh, from, you know, intellectual, an intellectual capacity of speaking the English language. Uh, I don't use the word. I almost started to say it uh, because so many people do it. You almost, well, you almost can hear it in the air, you know. It's used so much, but it's wrong. It's, it's wrongly used. It's incredible. Even Morris Cirillo, the evangelist, the incredible move of God. Like, you mean not credible? That's what the word means. Okay, so did I get to correct Morris, Uncle Morris on that? He's in heaven now. No point. Too late. Uh, so the word is, uh, is very inaccurate. Uh, amazing, astounding, positive, progressive, procreative. These are power words. Power filled. Dominion, you know, part of the dominion mandate to take authority over everything, to walk in the blessings of God in every way. Can I tell you, you can't speak what's on the mind of God like I have and not see it happen. If it's anointed, if God really spoke, it will come to pass. So next point, the, uh, the 2002, the Lord spoke about the economy and all the industries coming back. And people told me testimonies how, how uh, the industries came back. The, 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 the meat industry, the dairy industry, what other industries? Some of them were closed. They were, sh they were closed. Uh, com plants and industries, industrial complexes that were closed, came back to life from 2002. Everything began to happen. The tourism industry began to flourish. Now, it went all the way to 2007. And then when uh, uh, the post-election violence nonsense happened because of people's tribal differences and demonic nonsense and lust for power and all that. But, you know, to Hades with all of that and even them. Because you can't disrupt a nation and cause destruction and, and damage the people and killing people and destroying people and, and that just ends up being okay. It's not okay. It's never all right. It's never, it's, it's almost unforgivable. You know, if God can forgive someone, that's his business. If he, if he can do that. You know, can we forgive any wrongdoing to the, done to us? We have to, because Jesus said, forgive like my Father in heaven forgives you. You must forgive. And I say it all the time. Someone was begging my forgiveness. A bunch of leaders came to see me and begging my forgiveness. And one, they tried to give me offerings and everything. And I was like, yeah, I just, they were like, pray over us. You know what I just said? I just said, it's done. I threw, I put the money in the briefcase. So I was like, you know, whatever. Do I forgive everybody? I said, I'll say it for the thousandth time. I forgive. So what? You know, I'd like to feel it. I'd like to feel it more. But officially, I've done it. What, what does that do? It legally takes you away from the problem that happened. Forgiveness is a gift Jesus gives to us. To release ourselves from the evildoers. It does not absolve the evildoer of his guilt. That's a separate department of justice, DOJ. That's a separate, that's just, in America they call it the DOJ, the Department of Justice. That's a separate DOJ, my friends. Uh, you forgiving, some people don't want to forgive because they think if they forgive, like someone's going to get away with what they did. No, that's a different department. 
You forgive for your own soul and your own benefit. You're not doing anything for them. And the, the definition God has given me this so strongly is, I, I mean, when I speak this, it's very helpful. I know it would be very helpful to people that have been done wrong, have crimes done against them, horrible things done against them, because they think, how can they forgive because it's like they're letting the person off the hook? No, I have to, I have to explain that by revelation of the Holy Ghost. You're not letting anyone off the hook. You're getting yourself out of the equation of that mess. Does that help you? So you want to forgive. Yo, run to forgive. Run to forgive. Jump to forgive. Get excited to forgive. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And, and then, you know, and ask the Lord for the grace to forget. Manasseh was a name in the Bible. It meant the Lord made me to forget my trouble. Prophetic name. M-A-N-A-S-S-E-H. The name of that guy, Manasseh. Manasseh in the Bible. In the Hebrew definition of the name of the word Manasseh was the Lord made me to forget my trouble. The definition of Jehovah Jireh, Yireh or Jireh, and from the Hebrew perspective was he's our father, our overseer, like the bishop and overseer of our souls, like Jesus Christ, that's one of his names. One of his names. He's our father, our overseer, our bishop, so to speak, our overseer, who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. But don't get hung up on the title bishop because you look at bishop as a stinking flesh man like anybody else. No, that's not God. God is a spirit. <laughs> but in the, in the headship role of the overseer, you know, people sometimes say he's the overseer of this organization or this work. God, God is the big overseer, but he's not like a man. Amen. He's not, he's not, he's not a man. He's, he's way beyond, to say the least. I mean, you could speak for a hundred years and not explain how glorious he is and how much different than he is than humans or even angels, it's definitely demons or any creature on the earth or any animal or any inanimate or animate object in the universe. God is so far beyond all that. So <laughs> I get excited. I get excited when I think about he's the father. He's our father who sees our future and provision comes to see to it that the vision will happen. When God gives a promise, he's not a liar. When God has, has, has had me preach on prosperity and financial increase and abundance, I just saw the angel of the Lord. He's right here. Wow, wow, flash of light there, glory of God. The angels, always when I'm speaking, the angels come, always. They're around all the time, but I see them while I'm speaking all the time, all the time. Very, very often, almost every time, I see an angel somewhere in the meetings and uh, here in the studio. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So, um, I've been teaching on all this. Well, guess who gets the last laugh? Me. Not the devil. Not men. Me, myself. Why? Because it manifests. I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a tip if you want to preach on something good. Preach on something you like. Preach on something you have an affinity for. Preach on something you understand. Preach on something you, you know, someone said, you know, the whole counsel of God. No one has the whole counsel of God. Every man in ministry has a certain message. Oral Roberts used to say this. He said, God gives a man most of the time, almost all the time, a message, a one, one message. Look at Billy Graham. What was his message? Look at Kenneth Hagin. What was his message? Faith. Look at Billy Graham, salvation, preaching Christ to the master. That's all he ever did. He didn't go into other topics and other things. Look at uh, 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 Kenneth Hagin. He taught on faith. Look at Kenneth Copeland teaching on prosperity. Because he has revelation of it. God gave him revelation. He doesn't preach on every other thing. Faith and prosperity, they kind of they go together. Who else? T.L. Osborne was a missionary evangelist to the, to the nations. He preached Jesus in simplicity. This is who Jesus is. This is what he does. Miracles happen. The masses of humanity got saved by the, by the multiplied millions through his ministry. Reinhard Bonnke, Africa shall be saved. America shall be saved. Europe shall be saved. Whatever country he was in, that's what he would say. Salvation. His, his, his vision was to, to plunder hell and populate heaven, to depopulate hell as much as possible and populate heaven, period. He never went into other things. Reinhard Bonnke never did a message on finances, never. In fact, uh, I, think it was, I think it was Benny Hinn that was having a conversation with him. And 
I think it was Benny Hinn. And uh, Mike Murdoch talked about this too. Uh, uh, we, were t we were together, he was telling this story. And, and he got a revelation, Reinhard Bonnke, about, about financial abundance. And it might have been Dr. Murdoch I, or Benny asked him, Reinhardt, Brother Reinhardt, have you ever taught this in, a, in the pulpit as a sermon? He, he goes, never, no. Like he couldn't do it. He didn't want to. He got the revelation. It was a personal thing for him. But it was not his, here's what I'm saying. It was not his assignment to speak that. It was his assignment to preach about salvation. And that's what he did. And they, they counted at least 75 million souls that uh, were accredited to his account before he went to heaven that he had preached to and led to the Lord. And they had written decision cards, 75 million. It wasn't like they were guessing the crowd of the people and how many they think got saved. Though it was actually people that took a pen and a piece of paper and wrote their name and said, yes, I have received, I have received Jesus as my Savior. 75 million cards or pieces of paper were collected in his ministry. That's an amazing ministry. So God gives a man a message. I teach on a few different things, but there's, a, there's always like a, a thread of things about breakthrough and increase and purpose and success and, and even for, you know, financial increase. You know, and, uh, and God's not joking when he talks about it. It's going to happen. And the prophetic words, the prophetic grace, which I'm most known for. And we're speaking about that here today. Uh, things we prophesied over the nation of Kenya. And I call this, uh, affectionately called the subtitle of this, the next chapter. I'm going to get into a few things that God's speaking about lately. Before I finish here, let me continue. So the Lord spoke about the development of the nation and all these things were going to be going to happen. Skip up to 2004. There were some other major words I released. I can't remember them right now, but I have them printed. We'll look at that later. Skip up to 2007. The Lord showed me visions of the post-election violence eight months before it happened in the month of May. Uh, so that's June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Yes, January. seven months and three weeks to eight months before. I, I was in the office of Raphael Tuju, the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, and told him the whole story of all the prophecies for 50 minutes, five zero minutes, and he didn't interrupt me. He looked with big eyes and listened attentively. He's stone-faced, listening, amazed, and he went to tell President Kibaki all the things that I was talking about. And he came back to me later and he said, well, I was amazed at the things you were saying. In fact, some things I, I couldn't even imagine how they'd happen. And he said, His Excellency, the President, was also amazed. And, uh, but every single thing happened. I spoke about the road developments. Then the Thika Superhighway was built. I asked a person that used to tell me, they, uh, one of the people that was in my meetings, I said, hey, where do you live? Uh, what part of Nairobi are you living? They said, Kasarani. I said, where's that? Oh, it's out that way, you know, that way. I was like, it's far, a little bit far. I said, well, how is it going to Kasarani before the superhighway? And she said this, Prophet, it was pure hell. I thought, hell is not pure, but that's, I understand what you're saying. Hours in traffic, roads full of holes, single lane, total chaos, absolutely horrible. Maybe if they had a road with a double lane, uh, I don't even know if they did. And people were suffering every single day. Can you imagine being on the road for three, four hours just to get home from the city? Or two, two hours plus, whatever, how long it took. So God deemed necessary to see a superhighway built. I saw a vision of it. Nobody could imagine. Archbishop Harrison Nanga said, and you know, we have the video clip, you'll see it also. Uh, let's find that and put that as a link somewhere. I think it's on my... It's, it's somewhere. It um, might be on my website, and it's on another. He said, the prophet Thomas Manton, he began to speak these things. We heard what he was saying about these great things happening, and we looked at him and thought, is he imagining this? How could it be? Because he said everything was in chaos. Everything was in a bad state. He said, but he said, the Lord, and he wrote the foreword of this in my book, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. The foreword is here that he wrote three pages about how the anointing 
of the prophet and how God's mantles upon me and how God used me to be a director and encourager and, and a breakthrough agent of change for, you know, in the, in the good way for the nation of Kenya to bring direction and, uh, you know, comfort and counsel and information from God. And people are amazed. Now, now outside his building, then the Lord spoke about it, the expressway and train lines. I saw high-speed trains going across the whole country, modern trains, not those old rickety things on the little rickety track that they call trains, and I don't even know how they got anywhere back in the old days. But I saw modern trains, you know, like they have in the Western world, like they have in uh, Asia and China and Japan and China and America and Europe, and real trains, you know, um, new ones. And I saw them going all across the land. And I began to say that. People looked at me like, what? I said, Nairobi will become a beautiful city. It'll be changed. It'll be developed. Look, when Kenyatta Avenue, the main avenue in the city, was like a, 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 a broken road full of holes. And there was no traffic lights. There was no order to it. It was just a mess. And uh, now it's, it's amazing. The whole thing's been developed. When they first put traffic lights there, there were accidents for several months because people couldn't even get used to stopping at a light. So they would just crash into the car in front of them. And then the ones coming across, when they actually had the green light and the other one had the red light, they didn't even think to stop, so they would just keep going and crash. I used to see, when we travel, we go by there, you see wrecked cars, people are killed and everything. I mean, it was terrible. Destroyed, accidents everywhere, every single day until people finally got it in their system, like there's a light, you gotta stop, the other guy has the green light, and this is a red light. I mean, it, it didn't even exist. And then right in front of Archbishop Harrison Angus Church on Uhuru Highway there, uh, before it comes Mombasa Road, and that's a main thoroughfare that goes from, all the way from Nakuru, I guess, way out there, straight all the way down, Naivasha, all the other towns across and then straight through Westlands and through the city. And then, In fact, the road goes all the way to the coast. It goes another 600 kilometers all the way to Mombasa. 500-something kilometers, whatever it is, 600 kilometers. It's far, man. And that road was a little road. Now look, and they're going to expand it now to, from the Kuru to Nairobi. It's going to be it's a major thing where it's going to be even made better. So the one-lane place where it goes through and the trucks are blocking the way and it's a bit dangerous and there's a lot of traffic, that's all going to be fixed. I mean, who could imagine all this was going to happen? So the expressway comes and right now it's right in front of Archbishop Harrison Nanga's church. So we go outside the building, I'm preaching there, which I've had the privilege of preaching for him, I think with him 12 times in the last uh, year and a half or so. And that's a holy privilege because I don't know anybody else that's had that privilege uh, like myself. Of course, men on his staff who fill in for him and they're in the schedules of services, they work for him, they're, they're his staff, they're his assistant pastors. Uh, they'll have the microphone because they'll run a meeting in his absence or whatever. But to have a guest speaker come from the outside uh, 12 times in a row, I mean, and he keeps inviting me back. I mean, it's it's a phenomenon. Other conferences, the, speak, the host of the event would have me want to speak before him, and then he would invite me also to speak before him in another conference he was speaking at. You know, it's more than 12 now. I'm sure it's 12 or more times. And in fact, one video just came out that we did uh, from the Fresh Oil Conference, It's Heaven on Earth, and I spoke 12 prophecies, new prophecies over, over the nation of Kenya. We'll put that link also in the comments section. You can, you can also see that. We'll put it on the Facebook uh, page also. We should also put that on my website, thomasmanton.com. That should be a feature video. And it's great because it's just 33 minutes long. It's not a forever message. It's 33 minutes of heaven on earth. And I spoke 12 things by the Spirit that God gave me over the nation of Kenya. You need to watch that because that's its own genre and arena. I could actually repeat some of them here, but I'm calling this the next chapter, so I don't want to really refer to that. 
I may overlap and mention one or two things, but let's see. But um, the Lord is uh, doing so much and has done so much. So the road developments. Now, uh, uh, up, up, up to the next chapter now. The Lord said to me a couple of months ago, I can't remember exactly, two, three months ago, maybe. And he said, son, tell my people this new word. He said, Nairobi, Kenya will become the New York City of Africa. And I was like, wow. And every time I say it somewhere, the people scream and shout. They get so excited. But look at, look at the reality. And that's because it's, it's a great thing. But look at the reality of this. Even the UN from New York are coming to expand their things in, in uh, Kigiri over there, and UNEP, and uh, the United Nations, uh, whatever, bunch of organizations. Who thought that would happen? I have a friend in America who, who prophesied that the UN will actually leave New York and actually leave America. Where they'll be housed, part of it will be in Nairobi, maybe somewhere in Europe or whatever, we don't know. But they saw the UN leaving America, leaving New York. Let's wait and see on that. But uh, a, 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 a prophet with a real track record. So I, I believe, I believe he heard God. I believe, I believe what he said. Uh, speaking of New York, uh, the, o, the OG, the top G, Mr. Donald Trump, uh, uh, was, was rescued by angels uh, yesterday or whenever it was. And they can't get him. They could try, but the ones that tried are dead. And we want to say bravo to the, the warrior, Mr. Donald Trump. And uh, I'm sure I'll say this prophetically, just also by, you know, insight and observation. His poll numbers are going to go up even more now. <laughs> Because people might even think that the Democrats had something involved in this. You know, it might be some crazy demon-possessed people, but people would just automatically attribute to the ones that hate him and say they're really trying too hard now. These are evil people. We, we don't need to vote for them. We need to vote for him. He's our man. Oh, yes. So uh, we're praying for the will of God. I believe I know what the will of God is. I'll not announce it right now. But we're praying for the man. He was the 45th president, and we expect him to become the 47th president, president of America. <laughs> Glory to God. People shooting at him. The bullets can't. They can't, they can't get him. They can't. You know? What a shocking thing, yeah? It's like they're trying everything, you know? Like, when you're powerful and you really have something good in you, you know, the forces of darkness will try to shoot at you, but they can't win. Lift your hand and say, they can't win. They just can't. No matter what they do, those stupid infidel idiots, defeated losers, stupid, ugly friends of the devil, they're idiots, Luciferians, morons. Could you imagine how they're going to be, how they're going to feel when they get to hell? They'll look for the devil. They won't even find him. There'll probably be angels somewhere who have to get their wings burnt a little bit. Maybe they got to go take a shower somewhere because maybe the heat, you know, the, the dust from the flames will, get, will mess up their white wings and feathers or whatever they got, you know. I'm, I'm joking, but, you know, maybe they have to be there to put some semblance of order in the place. Hitler, you can't talk to anybody. S Lucifer, you, you, Satan, you stay over there. You you know, like people used to say as a joke, oh, we're going to have a party in hell. There's no party in hell. In fact, nobody, there's a man, and I want to give you a reference about hell. And I think everybody needs to watch this. I'll give a plug. And I don't do this. I, need, I don't care. I used to never do it. But I'll, I'm going to do it more and more these days. When I see something good that I think people need to watch and it's been done by somebody else, they had the grace to do that message. I don't have the... I may have known of the, some of the things, but I didn't take time to make that message. God gave them that message for the body of Christ. Let them be the one to tell you. Here's the name, Bill Weiss, W-I-E-S-E. Weiss, W-I-E-S-E. Bill, B-I-L-L, Weiss, W-I-E-S-E. Look him up, just look him up, 
and it's called, his message is called 23 Minutes in Hell. And God took him out of his body at 3 o'clock in the morning, sent him into hell. He, was, he wasn't a preacher. He was a very proper conservative Christian, very proper man. You know, he's not a wild guy. He's not a preacher. He's not, you know, an entertainer. He's just a, a real estate broker, real estate investor, whatever. Very proper, the way he speaks, very serious guy. You know, very prim and proper. You'll see him with his jacket and tie. He's not a guy that raises his voice or whatever. But he tells this story, uh, the experience he had. It's, it's phenomenal. Everybody needs to watch that. And, he, and, he, and I love what he does. He shares the scriptures from the Bible that he memorized. Dozens of scriptures about hell. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, he'll quote the scripture and he'll tell what he saw there, how it was. It's horrific. So if people get there, uh, it's really a tragedy and it's not going to be a fun time. And the, and the terrible thing is that it's for all of eternity. So I would recommend that everybody repent and apologize to God for living their own ways and uh, ask Jesus to save them right now. We could do it right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Come into my heart. I receive the gift of salvation and eternal life. Forgive me of all sins. I want to be yours. I want to be in your family. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to know that heaven will be my home and not hell. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you for this gift that you're giving to me. And then say further, Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing. I want to walk with you. I want to know you. I want to be blessed by you. I want to live a great life. And I want to live in heaven, in glory for eternity, not in the other place. In Jesus' name. What a way to pray that. So you say that, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to you, the way that you have for me. I want to be in your family. It, salvation is the gift of God to everyone who confesses it. Romans 10, 17 says, you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and then salvation is yours. You must pray it and you must say it. It can't be just like a thought. Or like, oh my God, yeah, I believe in God. No, 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 the devil. James said the devil also believes and uh, trembles. But is he saved? No. So it's not a wishful thought, or, you know, I'm, I think I'm an okay person. I don't do bad things to other people. No, the Bible says in Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23, both of those past, 23 and 23, 3.23, and 623 of Romans says, all have sinned and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know what I, I, I've been doing the last few years, a couple of years at least, two, two three, four years, I, I, got, I became conscious of this prayer more so than before, of 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John 1, 9, great scripture. Let's look at that. It says, you confess your sin to the Lord, no matter who you are. Even if you're a leader, even if you're a preacher, even if you're a saint, even if you're walking with God, even if you're doing your best to live for God, there's some way you're going to mess up somewhere. There's something you were supposed to do that you didn't do yet. There's something you did or said or thought or did or what that you shouldn't have done. And you got to ask God to forgive you. Keep your files clean every day. It's a great prayer to pray. And it's for the believer, let me tell you. Because people in the world, I don't know if they're thinking about all this. Let me confess my sin to Jesus and he will forgive me of all sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness, it says, 1 John 1, 9. I mean, who thinks about that that's in the world? They don't think about these things. Remember the scripture in Matthew 7? And, and they said, did we not preach in your name, prophesy in your name, cast out devils in your name? And Jesus said, hey, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Even says, I never knew you. I don't, I don't, I don't like that part so much. I don't understand it too well. But let me just say, if he says, I don't know you, get away from me, you'll go to where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. That even a preacher in the context of Scripture can end up in hell. Oh, I'm getting scared now. <laughs> I don't, do I want to even preach this? Let me say it. Oh, everybody needs to repent and, and live the best you can clean. If you make a mistake along your way, Repent the same day. In fact, don't wait till later. Do it in the same hour, in the same few minutes. You, 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 something's wrong. You just know it's wrong. You know, in whatever way, everybody has something in there. You know, every, to everybody it's different, you know? 
But ask God to forgive you and make sure the, the file is clean. You know what I think about when I, when I pray like that? I thought, what if unawares, like the scripture says in Thessalonians, I think somewhere, like a thief in the night, he's going to appear. Huh? We hate thieves, thief in the night. What a horrible thought. What an analogy. I don't even like it. But like he'll just appear out of, you know, what if he decides to come right now? We weren't expecting him, maybe. I don't believe the Lord's coming now because there's too much to do. There's too much to get done. There's too much we haven't done yet. And there's, there's too many souls that are lost. There's too many people that need to get saved. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's coming today. I, I, I can't see it, you know. But, but what if he did? Would I want to be taken unaware? What about the scripture that says one will be left in the field and one taken? One will disappear, one will stay. Ooh, Lord. What about Matthew 25? I'm getting, in, I'm getting this by the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to preachers, leaders, prophets, whoever you are, and these people that have all these titles, like archbishop, doctor, reverend. What is wrong with you, man? You know, I think the archbishop title should only go to the guy that has like more than 100 churches. And he's already preached to thousands and he's known and his ministry's proven. Now maybe he's the bishop of bishops. Many bishops, many other apostles, many other pastors, many other branches that house thousands of people. Maybe now that title of the arch is there because he's at a, a pinnacle, at a high place, like my friend Harrison Anga. I remember when I saw his name, Archbishop, I thought about it. I was like, Archbishop, wow, that's... That's a, big, that's a big word, you know? But then I thought about him. He's a father of other fathers. John William Kamani, who has the biggest church, the second largest church probably in, in Kenya. Harrison Nangas is the largest uh, of attendance. He's running about 12,000 people. This morning he had about 12,000 people in each service. And I'm sure that maybe the one that gets the most full, whichever, it's, that's the later one in the morning, they do four services. 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon. And they go from, he goes from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. straight preaching. Probably has a little sip of tea, some juice or whatever, up in his office, comes back down, preaches again, preaches again, preaches again. And uh, uh, all those services in the morning. But the, 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 the attendance is over 12,000. And I don't think Apostle Kamani has quite that many. He might have... Eight, ten, eight, nine thousand. I don't know. I don't know the number I, to be to be verified. But what a church he has in the Kuru. He's the son of Harrison Nanga, spiritual son. He grew up. He came up in Harrison Nanga's ministry, and now he's a major apostle, and he has his own movement. So he's under that. So you see the arch thing. But there, are pe but there are people that take these titles unto themselves. I said this before. There's there's a meme that go, that's been going around the internet. And I first looked at it, I was like, oh, this is rough. But, I, but then I really, I really embraced it and grew to love it because I thought it through. It says uh, a bishop, archbishop, chief, whatever, with an X through it. Apostle, prophet, you know, all these grandiose titles, reverend, doctor, whatever. And at the bottom it says servant. I said, that's me. I'm there at the bottom. That's me, servant. And I love the promotion that came from Jesus in John 15. He said, I no longer call you my servants, but I call you my friend. Abraham was blessed because he was the friend of God. Are you a friend of God? So I, wanna, I, wanted to, I, I saw this earlier in the day in a vision, so I, I have to speak on it now prophetically over the people, over the church world, the nation of Kenya. But this is applicable to the whole world. I hope nobody just sees the title of this and goes, ah, that's just for Kenya, I don't care. I wish people would watch this because, uh, and take it as you know, words for every nation because, because they are. Uh, as well as for Kenya. And um, I saw a vision of this earlier, and I'm going to say it very strongly right now as God's prophet. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something very powerful. Your concern as a leader is not to be like, have a position, a lust for a title, or a position, or a situation. Your job is to become the friend of God and get anointed and carry his anointing to people. And then everybody will know you. You want to be known? 
God will cause you to want to be unknown before you get known. There's the angel again, another one. Right now, just on that. That's a good word. The angel said amen. Hey, angels, how are you? Boy, I wish I knew their names. I could address them properly. You know, such a holy, awesome, created, magnificent, supernatural creation of God. And I look at them and go, oh, it's an angel. Doesn't he have a name? Oh, I'm getting into something here. You can introduce yourselves to me. I want to know your names. I've never really prayed that before, I, that I can remember. Maybe years ago, but now I'm, I'm thinking, there we go. oh, I see an angel, I see an angel. Are they cheap like that? I just call them like a thing? I hate that. Grieves my spirit. I don't like it. Introduce me to yourself. Let me know which rank you're from, which order you're from, what's your, which class of angel are you? Are you from Michael the warrior? Are you from Gabriel the messengers? Or are you from, uh, what's the other one? Whatever the other ones are, the worship angels, the what, the administrative angels, the supernatural angels that bring healing. I've seen angels with, certain angels, they have gold in their wings, they see them in a vision. When that happens, I know there's a great realm of financial blessing coming to people. And I've seen the miracles around the world, testimonies of people that have been blessed financially. When I saw those angels, they have, they have white and they have gold in their garments and they have gold in their wings. I've seen him, and it's real gold. It's gold. It's real gold. Whether it's liquid gold, like a, a plot attached to, or it's really gold, I don't know. But there's white, and there's gold, and there's different uh, things. I've, I've seen them. And whenever I've seen that, it's usually a great prophetic message about abundance financially, and miracles happen for people. I've seen those kind of different angels. But well, wouldn't it be good to just know which one is which and you say hello properly and greet them properly? Okay, anyway. Uh, you know, people are so scared about this thing about knowing angels, knowing God. Well, they're part, of the fa they're part of the creation. They're part of the big family. So we should be acquainted with them like we are with the Holy Spirit. You say you know Jesus, you understand how you would think he looks. So the Father God sitting on the throne in heaven, well, the angels are also his elected messengers and ministers and servants to us, the heirs of salvation. Man is high in ranking high, is higher than an angel because there's God, then there's men, then there's angels, then there's demons at the bottom. And Slewfoot, the chief of the flies, Lord of the flies, they're at the bottom. Angels are third in rank. Men is two. Why? Number two, why? Because we're the heirs of salvation. We're the sons of God. God does not say the angels are his sons. They're his angels. They're ministers, the Bible says. Servants to the heirs of salvation. That's me. That's you if you're saved. We're royal kings and priests unto the Most High. The angels were never given that designation. They were never told that they were that. Think about it. Scripture, let, let's know the word. Let's know the scripture. That, that's where you get doctrine from. That's where you get uh, truth from. From the scripture. Not from what people think they think about it or what. But know from what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? About angels. <clears throat> what does the Bible say about many different things. That's what, that's what truth is. And John 8, 32, let's look at that, says, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. It'll make you something you weren't before. So people need to come off their high horses and think they're like uh, so great. They're legends in their own mind, not legends in their own time. Get over that. Be a servant. God will raise you, call you his son. Be a servant lady. God will call you his daughter. Let him do that. Carry the glory, carry the anointing. Let the supernatural happen through you. And your, your ministry will have uh, power and relevance and application to change things in the world. There's another angel right there. Wow. 
Oh, they're getting closer to me. I saw them over there, now they're here. This one's right here. The other one's over there, the other one's over there. Usually like at least three that I see. Sometimes I've seen whole battalions of them in revivals and moves of God that we've carried to the nations. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. So be a servant and be a carrier of the anointing. And if you're anointed, now you're doing something. And honor doesn't come for nothing. I, wrote, I, I did a whole teaching, I have it here, called The Importance of Honor by Thomas Manton IV. Yes. This is a great teaching. And we need to make a book out of this. And I have some other volumes of this too. We're going to have them all laid out into a book. I need help. I am understaffed, overworked, overwhelmed, overloaded with so much work to do. And uh, we're looking to put together more of the dream team of people. If you feel inclined to get involved with us as a financial partner, I love you for that. And if someone has a gift and a grace to be an expert, a professional in a certain arena of something, and you don't want to come to me just looking for a job, why don't you hire me? Give me a contract. You want, you want to lose my attention, start using words like that when you first even meet me. You know, I, I had one guy tell me, well, you're going to give us a contract. I, I looked at him like, huh? I thought, because you said so, never. Goodbye. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. I didn't say anything. I just looked at the guy, but I never, I never engaged him again. I said, no, 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 I can't. I had somebody come to see me years ago at the Grand Regency Hotel. I was staying there, and these two uh, buffoons from Kenya, they came and they, they just talked to me about building a website, another website. We just talked. I didn't ask them for anything. I didn't engage them. I didn't invite them. I didn't promise anything. I didn't purport to hire them or engage them at all, never, even remotely in the conversation. Next thing you know, they try to talk to someone and send me an invoice for 31000 I looked at it, I said, these people are joking. I, I said, delete the file or tear the paper, throw it in the rubbish bin, uh, and they can never talk to me again. And I never saw them till today. How, when was that? 2000, 2007. So quite a few minutes ago, right? Who are they? Where are they? I don't know or care. Don't come to me like that. I saw two ministries that I was amazed. I heard it again in a, in a leaders meeting that this guy was saying that they have all of these people. I think it's a, a, a man from Ghana. All these people that work for them and they're all volunteers. And there's someone in Kenya, too, that does this, too. They have all these people working in the church. They're all volunteers. So they were bragging. The leader was bragging like none of the people get paid. I was like, boy, I wish you could teach me something. I need to figure that one out. <laughs> so if you need to hire people, you know, there's, that's part of life, uh, the money will be there. It's okay. But that's not the first premise of it. You know, some people only come to see me because they see Mr. Mzungu, white man from America, and they think uh, they'll get some money from me. Well, that's the quickest way to not get money from me. And I've been around, I've been doing this a long time. If you come to me like that, you'll never get a coin. Trust me on that. I'll discern you, and I'll flip the switch and mark you in my mind, and I wouldn't even buy you a cup of tea after that because you're a bad investment. I've had other people come like with friendship, you know, like they were, we're, we're talking a lot, we're getting along, and then they go quiet. And, you, and I had helped try to help them with some things they were doing, and I realized it was a total loss because they didn't have the character or the flow or the blessing or the favor. I don't know what it was. And they never got through on the project, and the money was just lost. I said, well, I learned from that. I'll never do that again. One guy, I felt he was calling me all the time. One guy, I feel like, uh, it's like the Lord, I almost saw like the Lord was showing me, uh, kind of. I was kind of getting a glimpse that God even made him stop contacting me because it's just a losing game. 
Now, if he comes around, there's a re there should be a return on my investment. He's got to give me something multiplied what I gave him. And I'll demand it. I say, now, you promised this and this and this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to reciprocate. Then now do it. Pay me. Where's the money? If not, you're a liar and a thief both. And there are plenty of people, plenty of people like that around. I had a lady from, uh, <laughs> she's in some government institution, I think, and uh, they've been following my prophecies for years, and she was saying, like, uh, how, how could preachers steal? Because the stories were going at the table about how you go to preach somewhere, they give you nothing, then they lie, promise to send you, and they never do. Then they take uh, books, and they act like they're going to sell them, and they don't. They don't give you the money or the books. So they just have no character. They just have no good way about them. Can I tell you, this brings a curse to people. Then I see, you hear stories back later on, with people that did, did wrong things uh, that crossed your path. And judgment comes back to them. So this person was shocked. This lady, she was shocked. She was shaking her head. She was like, I didn't know all this, but how could people do that? Is that? She was like shocked. She kept going, oh, like really? How could people do this? I said, yeah, they do every day. That means money is their God. Their belly is their God. You know, the scripture in Mark 16, 17 says, Romans 16, 17, Romans 16, 17, says, mark those who cause division among you and avoid them and have no company with them because they serve not our Lord, not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. You got to look at what people's motivation is. If you, if you want to make ministry or the name of God or the church or the name of Christ like a business for yourself, woe unto you. You'll, you'll probably burn in hell. And, and that's a big thing to unwind yourself from and to repent of. And many people that are like that, they never repent. Dr. Mike Murdoch, who's now 78 years old, uh, when he was still 77 before April, when he turned 78 a couple of months back, he says, I'm 77 years old, the way he talks to him. And he says, I've never known a thief or a liar to repent or change in all my years. I said, well, that's, that's interesting. And he taught another principle. He says, when you find a liar, don't tell them they're a liar. When you find a thief, don't tell them they're a thief. Just know and then maneuver accordingly. There's a reason for that. I took the counsel and I understand what it is. But uh, people that can act like that and do things like that, it's just, it's against the gospel. It's against the doctrine. It's against the nature of God. It's against the nature of righteousness. Prophecies over Kenya, prophecies over leaders, prophecies over the nations of the world. I'm speaking here by the Holy Ghost. Character, motivation, how you live, how you act, how you do. Your whole genre and arena of living your philosophy about life, your philosophy about God, your belief about God, your understanding about God, the scripture about your calling, what you're supposed to do, what you're not, what you, you know, how you're supposed to carry on. Your motivation for doing anything needs to be of a pure zeal and desire and passion to serve God and to obey Him in what He's called you to do and fulfill His mission. When another angel over there right now. Wow, right over there. Oh, this is glorious. Lord, let the angels of God, whatever they're here to do, bring me all the treasures, put them on the table. We need everything for the work. And you're doing so many things. I, I, and I won't even uh, pontificate upon uh, some of the many amazing blessings that God is uh, releasing into my life. It's beyond, uh, it's beyond great, let me tell you. And I won't share details. It's just like, wow, all in caps, glory be to God forever. <sighs> now I want to say this, if you, I saw this also in a vision, that I need to give people a chance to become partners. You want to partner with this work. Let me tell you what will happen for you. God will bless your life. 
You can do it by M-Pesa, SendWave, PayPal. Those are uh, some of the favorite ways that we have that people can give. Uh, in America, Cash App, we still do use that. Western Union, MoneyGram, we, we use those still. You can still do those. To Thomas Manton, if you need more details, uh, write me a, a message to tell me that you plan to do that. If you need banking information for something larger, you can request bank wire details by uh, contacting me and we'll, 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 we'll reply back and tell you how to do it. There, there's a blessing in sowing and, and tithing. And God, God is raising us up to really bring some things forward. I, I'm saying these are prophecies and I'm calling this the next chapter because the prophetic is turning apostolic in function. Yeah? The, 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 the realm of leadership has gone to a, an entirely higher level. The, the anointing, the grace, the glory has, has, has intensified. It's always been intense. I, I can't even compare it to the times we had visitations come to cities and the glory hit the whole place. That was, phenom that was a phenomenon. And those kind of things don't happen every day. That's not like an everyday, 24 hours a day experience for somebody where that kind of glory manifests. In, in, a, in a visitation from heaven that comes to a city, a revival that erupts. That's a very special thing. But I'm telling you right now, it's like all of that combined along the way has brought us to this point and God is releasing a realm of authority and glory uh, for me to be a spiritual father to so many people and, and, and this grace of God to do so much. I can talk about it for a long time, but I'm not going to do it. And, and, and I want to tell you, tap into that grace by sowing into this anointing. God will do something phenomenal for you. The details are on the screen on how to do it. Let's do that right now. The M-Pesa number's there. Use that if you want to send it uh, to M-Pesa via SendWave, the app SendWave. Download it into your phone. Or I guess you could do it in your computer, probably just as easy in your phone. SendWave, S-E-N-D-W-A-V-E. -E. Download that, put in the details, and you use my name. If you have, need clarity on that, contact me how to, how to put it with the number plus 254706. It's on the screen. 164191. If you're locally in Kenya, you don't need the plus 254. That's the country code. Just use 0706. 164191. You could send a love gift, a seed by M-Pesa. If you're tithing, you feel led to come our way in that regard. Uh, we welcome you into the family uh, uh, as, as a member, as a partner, and you can do that to the same way. PayPal is wonderful. PayPal.me forward sign Thomas Manton is the way to do that. And that's a very, very convenient way to sow. You could do it via credit card. You can transfer the balances between the bank and the thing. And many people already have a PayPal, PayPal account. If you don't have a PayPal account, please go to PayPal in the Google <clears throat> Play or just type it in PayPal, P-A-Y-P-A-L and download that and use that. Set up a little account for yourself. It's a great way to transfer money and also to give offerings and sow seed. It's great to use for giving. You want to live well, you need to give well. You need to live big. You need to give big. Remember the scripture said in 2 Corinthians 8, I think it is in the chapter there somewhere. He who sows sparingly, or she, who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but who, the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. That's a promise from God. The first fruits is another part of the biblical economic system. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 says, bring your first fruits to the Lord, the first thing of anything, a new endeavor, a new business, a new salary, a new whatever, take uh, the, the first portion of that and sow it as a seed. That's called the first fruit. Alms to the poor is something you want to help the needy. You could do it by sowing into the ministry and we'll take, if you'd make designate for that uh, any way you want to, you, we, uh, by message or whatever, we will take that and use it for that. And then the Lord promised and... Uh, I think it's in Isaiah 41 somewhere. You give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. If we can find that scripture. And he will repay what you gave. But the seed is the thing that multiplies. And the tithe from Malachi 3 is what opens up the windows of heaven. 
He said, I'll pour you out a blessing there's not room enough to receive, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. The devil will not be able to devour your life or your things. There's a protection upon the tither. And he said, you're cursed with a curse if you don't tithe. A curse is added to your financial life if you don't tithe. You just have to do it. I want to shout at people. Say, you got to be a tither or else you, you got devils somewhere in your world. And we don't want them. You don't want them, maybe, but we definitely don't want them. Tithing is like a, it's a holy thing. The 10% of the 100% of something you get, 10% of it is not yours to keep, biblically speaking. It's holy unto the Lord. The tithe is the Lord's. The 10% is his. He allows the 100% to come to you. Then it's for you. And God gave four promises of blessing for doing it. I'm going to repeat them again. Four promises of blessing for you when you tithe. Now, if you don't believe the word, you're a joker. Anybody that doesn't believe the word is a joker. You say you're a Christian. Oh, I love God. I'm in the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You talk all that stuff. And you don't want to do this thing? Well, you don't believe what he said in Malachi 3. You don't believe what he said in Leviticus 26. You don't believe what he said in uh, Deuteronomy, several chapters talk about it. And Hebrews 7 also talks about the tithe. The high priest Melchizedek receiving tithes from Abraham. Abraham got blessed. You know, it said that he was worth of over 200 billion U.S. dollars. Abraham. Very wealthy. This is part of the prophetic flow. Oh, yes. Because, you know, I talked about character and holiness a minute ago. Humbling yourself, being a servant, carrying the anointing. I'm sharing a lot of different things. These are all prophecies. I'll call this the next chapter. Part one of this. Maybe we'll continue in this more. I'm sure we will. Me and God will speak some more on this, these things. But the financial covenant, oh my. Without being blessed financially, what are you going to do? How are you going to live? How are you going to progress? How are you going to be elevated? Two things you need if you want to get anything done. Three things. You need the vision of God first. Vision, the direction for the mission. Then two, well, there's four things really. Two, you need uh, specific detailed instructions and ideas and wisdom and ingenuity on how to do it, what exactly to do. And then three, you need the resources and the people. Put it in whatever order you want. First, you got to know what you're doing. I think that has to be number one. Two, you need to know how to do it, what to do. That's important, yes. And then the people and the resources. If those are missing, those two, you can't do much. In fact, you can't do anything. If you don't have the right people and you don't have the right resources, what can you actually do? Little or nothing or little of anything. So I began to think upon this thing about the tithe. I thought, God, this is amazing. You, you said it so emphatically, so clearly. I believe you. I have to believe that. I, I mean, what else can I do? And then last week I had an experience. I had a big tithe, and I was going to send it, and I think I was busy, and I just maybe slipped me to send it, you know, in the same. And the Lord spoke to me, like he speaks to me about, Super highways and new roads and new governments and <laughs> things that affect the lives of hundreds of millions of people around the world. The same voice, the way he speaks to us, as he spoke to me. He said, son, that is not yours. I said, ah, not mine. Then I can't keep it. I can't keep it anywhere. Let me send it right now. Can I tell you what happened? I sent it. And I asked for an appointment with the man of God. And I, he instantly replied, and I went to see him, and he blessed me and gave me something worth six figures right there. Oh, yes. And more than that. And the blessing, too. And he prophesied. And can I tell you, that was last week, now this week, it was confirmed, and it's actually happening. I will not say more. I don't need anybody to go, ooh, ooh, ooh don't, don't do that, don't do that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not there right now. I'm just telling you. 
a testimony of how these things work. And I'll say something else to leaders, to all kind of everybody from highest to lowest and in between, wherever you are in life, if you want God to bless you, you have to obey his word. Now, people in the world, they can be crooks. They could be heathens. They could worship demons. They could be sons of the devil. They don't have to be anywhere near God or in his family. And they can prosper. Why? Because they go after their vision. And some high-level people, they have this thing about giving the tithe. Even the Jews do it. They have a thing called charity. They're not in the church speaking in tongues, lifting their hands. They're not born, they're not born again. These high-level Jews, these rich Jews, they have a, a thing where they take their percentage and give it back to the communities and to charities. They do it. They really follow the biblical example of tithing. And God even honors that because he sees it as they're following a principle that he's ordained. Now, some people don't want to do that. Who are you? You arrogant thing, you. Yeah, and you're like praying, oh, God, I hope you bless me, bless my life, bless my business. Ah, oh, what? How? You don't want to even want to obey what he said in the first place. How's he going to bless you? And some people mistake like a provision for survival as a blessing. <clears throat> God does love us, you know. <laughs> Listen to God's prophet here. God does love us, you know. He doesn't want you to starve and die. He doesn't want you to be locked out of your house. He doesn't want you to not have a roof over your head. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to suffer, you know, uh, incessantly. So he's merciful to us. But that's not really a blessing. That's just like a provision of life. It's, it's a blessing in a way that he cares. For you. you see, he could be caring for you like something could work out. And it seems to be like a bit supernatural. You go, oh, wow, you know, God is with me. Yeah. But you haven't seen the bigger blessing. The outpour and the overflow, because you didn't obey the first principle. So will God help you to survive, even if you're not a tither, or not a giver, you're disobedient in different areas of whatever, and you're not fulfilling the vision and the mission that he has and all the, all the A to Z list of things to do in the kingdom of God? Will, will he still be merciful to you? Oh, he will. Of course. He's, he's a loving father. But you want to talk about the big blessing? I listened to a man yesterday who was talking about the trillions in the stock market. He said, that's mine. He talked to all his friends in his conference that came to his conference, a beautiful building he has. And he's, it's all paid for, debt free. He lives in the biggest home in his state in America. He's just a phenomenal guy. He has a, one jet, 50, his, his one, jet, one of his jets is $60 million. One of them, $60 million, $60 million. And God provided for him to, to get it. And he's living on that level. He has his own uh, fuel factory that people told him he could never get. And finally, the same people that told him he could never get it, for a certain reason, they flipped it over to him that he could get it. And it was supernatural. And they mocked him, said he could never have such a thing. And he actually owns his own FBO, that he could actually put other people out of business if he wanted to. He said, even the presidential jet, Air Force One, when it comes to his city, it, it lands in his hangar. And he has offices there, and he lets the president of the United States, the Secret Service, and everybody to go into his office. He could throw them out and refuse them access. But he said, I won't dishonor the, head, the, the government. I'll honor them, no matter who's there. He said, Joe Biden came there. Uh, Donald Trump has come there. Can you imagine? And he owns that. How did he get there? It goes back to belief and develop the development of faith. And also he did a whole teaching about the whole system of finances, how he got the revelation of it. That's one man. David Oyedipo, in, his name is Dr. Jesse Duplantis in America. Phenomenal man of God. Phenomenal evangelist. Consistent, strong. He's now 75 years old. He's still going like he was, like he's in his 30s or 40s. On top of the world in every way. And he's talking about the industries, the trillions of, not billions, but trillions of dollars that run in the market. He said, we need to, as the body of Christ, we need to tap into those realms. Why? 
because you can pull resources. You know, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous. And the man in Nigeria, uh, Bishop David, in Lagos, he said he got the revelation of financial prosperity in 1994. It came from heaven when he was in a heavy prayer. And he said he got to understand that I am not supposed to be poor financially. As a Christian, it's part of another angel there. Wow. As the, wow. Oh. As, as, as a child of God, as, a, as an heir of salvation, I'm not supposed to be poor. We're also not supposed to be sick. We're not supposed to be depressed. We're not supposed to be sad. We're not supposed to have problems. We're not supposed to be oppressed. We're not supposed to be diseased or infirm. We're not supposed to be poor. Because the covenant solves that. The back of the cross, the front of the cross, you see Jesus there and you're crying, oh God, help us, oh Lord, you're the Savior. Go to the back and look at his back. Look at his back on the back of, from the back of the cross. The skin is torn from the cat of nine tails. It ripped his flesh off. You can see straight through to the bone. All of those lashes, the whipping was for the chastisement for our healing. You don't believe in healing? Look at that. And then... They cast lots for his garments. Nobody, nobody gambles for rags. He had the finest garments that even a condemned... Who, who gambles to get the clothes of a condemned man? Think about that. What they did for Jesus. Why? Because he had the finest things. That's a symbolic move for our prosperity. It's part of the covenant. But then God expects us to do things and to flow with it. If we really want to be blessed. So I'm saying all this in the realm of teaching and admonition and instruction and mentoring and counsel. You need to obey the word of God. Another angel right there. They are here. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let your presence touch everyone listening. Let them be convicted by these words that you're speaking through me. Let them take action. Let they begin to work on these things and just do them. However, whatever, however, whenever, get them done and live that life. And you promised us the blessings of overflow when we obey your word. When we have our attitude right, our hearts right, our life right, everything is flowing according to your plan. And your will, everything begins to work well. And the things we've been promised will surely come to pass and surely happen. The things that we've waited to see will surely be granted unto us. It's, a, it's an absolute truth, an absolute settled fact. It's not a matter of if it happens, it's only a matter of when it happens. It's not a matter of if something's going to come through. It's only a matter of which hour, which moment of which hour of which day is it going to actually appear in the realm of tangible manifestation. If you do things God's way, he'll bless you. I'm prophesying. I'm praying and I'm prophesying at the same time. The blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10.22 said, makes rich. Proverbs 10.22. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Oh, yes. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Ecclesiastes 2.26 says, God gives the job to the sinner to gather and collect things that then those things will be given over to the one who's good before God. And I'm good before God. How about you? And Ecclesiastes, I think the fifth chapter somewhere, talks about wealth. We'll find the scripture later. Wealth is the gift of God. A big part of his plan is in the realm of financial blessing. And I'm praying that right now. A lot of people say, yeah, amen, amen, amen. But you still don't want to do what he said. So stop playing in church. 
Stop being a, a, an amen, you know, I'm shouting hallelujah, oh yeah. And then you have no intention of doing what he said. Then guess what? You're still not going to get it that way. Say amen all you want. Lift your hands all you want. Do a dance. Shout. Ah, oh, the preacher's preaching. Ah, I'm going to say amen. Ah, I receive it. Ah. I want to see it happen. How's it going to happen? By taking heed according to his word. The psalmist said in the 119th Psalm, the longest chapter in the Bible, it's 160 verses. I think it's 100 and nearly 160 verses, 160 verses, something like that. Psalm 119, one of them says, how can a young man take care of his own way and make sure it's blessed? By taking heed according to the word. Walking according to the word. The Psalm 119 also has a scripture. Can't remember the exact number of it. Does Psalm 119 go all the way up to 162 verses? I think it does. Well, I'll look at it again later. It's amazing. And it says, it says the word, your word, Lord, is a, is a lamp unto my feet that I can see where I'm taking my steps and a light unto my path to show me the way forward. Your word does that. I prophesy there's going to be revival, a revival of teaching in the body of Christ where people can do be teaching. All this church foolishness, you know, singing songs, running, jumping around, acting like what? The people need to get the substance of the word of God. And the anointing needs to come for miracles. The anointing and the presence need to come to empower people. I was speaking in a meeting uh, a couple days ago, some far away, untoward place. Oh my God, how I got there. I don't know, it's just something else. And while I'm speaking, the power of God fell upon all these leaders. And these guys were telling me afterwards, says, we know the Holy Spirit. We, we, we're students, we know. It says, when you were speaking, the power of God fell on me and I started to shake. Many people, men and women, leaders, preachers, leaders of churches, Leaders of organizations, they were there. And they were, they were shaking under the power of God. A tangible anointing fell. So when you're speaking, the anointing, the Holy Ghost himself needs to come and stand there and, and, and confirm and empower people listening. But the word needs to be the content. Substantive revelation, substantive content, substantive things from the scripture is what's going to change people's lives. Not cultural drama, chit-chat, funny songs, and whatever else happens in a lot of places. <laughs> and I love everybody. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, cheeky to say that, but you know what I mean? The reality of real anointed worship songs, when you sing them, it's like it invokes the presence of God. Something happens. When you preach the word, the Holy Ghost is the author of the word. He's going to, another angel here. Wow, the anointing too. I just see, I see light. I, I feel like this time it's the Holy Spirit on my head. That was not an angel. Maybe he's this one here with him, but I just saw this thing over my head. That's the Holy Ghost. Wow. Father, we rebuke every demon from off of people. That they, you know, people emphasize also on deliverance. Why do people come to church and they have so many demons? They need deliverance. We're into it. We love it. We want to see people delivered. We don't mind if they scream and fall down and growl. And it happens. In Archbishop Harrison's church, oh my God, when I'm preaching there, people by the hundreds will scream out and fall down and roll on the floor. At first, I was a bit shocked, you know. And the first time I was preaching there, and this screaming started to come up every, from everywhere. I was a little bit, I was a little bit amazed, you know. And I thought, well, that's what happens here. People get delivered. But I, and I also began to think, uh, the innocent human who's attacked by devils needs to be set free from demons. Yes, that's the love of God. That's the power of God to, to even do that. Jesus said, "You'll cast out devils." But sometimes you got to wonder, <clears throat> where do all these demons come from? Why are people carrying them as attachments and passengers <laughs> on their physical persons, personhoods? 
<laughs> so much illicit activity. Maybe not all of their own, maybe environments, maybe family lines, maybe a lot of... But uh, I want to tell you something as a promise by the Holy Ghost. If you really make the word your mission, discovering what it is God wants you to be doing, the word... The entrance of thy word gives light, yes? And when we're walking in God's power and presence and grace, we're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Like Isaiah 60 said, arise and shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The gross darkness covers the earth. My light shall be seen upon you. Look behind me. You see Nairobi City? The great city. You see the park, Uhuru Park. And Uhuru Park is now uh, getting uh, activated again by public outcry to have crusades again there and conferences again there. And uh, we're doing some meetings there. Some of our friends are having conferences and setting up big tents and all that to have conferences there. It should be. That's a great historic place where the gospel was preached by the likes of the great Reinhard Bonnke and others. I wonder if T.L. Osborne ever came there years ago. He might have. I know Bonky was there back in the 80s even. The hundreds of thousands of people saved. People that are living in churches today can trace it back to the meeting when they met him in the, in the, in the big outdoor place in Uhuru Park and they got born again there. It's a holy place for that. Then the government, they want to change it into something else. And the people said, no, we're not going to let you do that. This is for the gospel. You can see it behind me. It's a glorious view, isn't it? But what a great uh, African hub city. You know, I prophesied this in 22 years ago. I, I don't care what you want to say now about, you know, being likened to New York and maybe other people are trying to coin a phrase out of that. But the Lord spoke to me. I, this is as a prophetic word that it will become the New York City of Africa. But guess what? I, I want to prove the prophetic grace to you, the prophetic glory that's upon my life and ministry. We didn't just say that this month or this year or the last few months. This was 22 years ago. Two decades and two years ago when there was nothing here but a burning, they used to call it the city of the sun. There was no trees, there was no anything, broken roads, street people everywhere, crime and theft and it was just a horrible environment, nasty environment. Nothing was developed. There was nothing to base any thought upon that it would ever become something. And the Lord said, I've ordained this city to be a cosmopolitan, world-class city. And look what's happened. Look at the other cities around. Look at Arusha, Tanzania. Look at Kampala, Uganda. Look at uh, Lusaka, Zambia. Look at the different cities around. And you say, how is this? How is this city? How is that city? Not to the level of this. And it's going to go even further. So this is the East African headquarters, but it's a shining jewel on the continent of Africa. And now you see the revolt of the Generation Z youth coming up to say to the government, you can't do this corruption and greed and taking from people anymore. We're not going to have it. Now, now six years ago, in 2018, the, end, the last day of July, July 31st, 2018, the video is there. You'll see it. Find the link. Look at, watch the video for yourself. And the Lord had me walking in the central business district, the uptown uh, uh, Kamati Street, between the Hilton Hotel and the Nation Center, the two white cylindrical buildings, the white Nation Center and the kind of stone color pieces and the white Hilton Tower and the Nation Center. Between the two, I was walking back and forth, and you'll see it on the video behind me. And the Lord said, I'm releasing a move from heaven of anti-corruption into the nation of Kenya. It will become a movement, the Lord said. Now, this thing here is a movement. One thing I learned about, the political system will never correct itself, especially if it's corrupt, because they're all in, involved. And even if someone get some righteousness about them and they want to stand up and say, this is wrong, the others will kill him because they don't want anybody to break that system. But when millions of young people come out to the streets and revolt 
and they say they don't care what you say. We're going to say what we want. We're going to go to the State House. We're going to go to the House of Parliament. We're going to go in the streets. We're going to do mass demonstrations. You're not going to, you're not going to tone us down. You're not going to, you, you, you can't control that. And this is what's happened. And, but the Lord said six years ago, it'll become a movement. You see? Now look. So all that has to happen for this to become the great shining jewel of life that God wants it to be. And then as it is in the church, the church is also being cleaned up. Can I tell you, there are many that are old wineskins. They're gone. They'll never recover. The anointing has left them. Some are Ichabod. Ichabod, the glory has departed, has been written over them. Some long ago, some of late, I don't know. And they just become... They're irrelevant. God's going to raise a new army. And the, the youth, the younger people, the younger generation, many leaders are going to come out from them. And many adults are going to say, I, I, I can't live in nonsense. I have to really serve God. I have to carry his glory. I have to get the mission done. The Lord will anoint them with power. So don't concern yourself about, you know, I'm archbishop, I'm chief this, I'm apostle. You know, everybody's an apostle these days. Everyone's a prophet, prophet, apostle, apostle. What's your title? Apostle. You got half a microphone and three people, and you're by yourself in a skinny room, and you're an apostle of who? Excuse me. Either de define yourself as an evangelist or a pastor. Are you pastoring people? Maybe you're like a shepherd. You have that kind of grace. You're a pastor. You're an evangelist, you're an outreach preacher, going after people, going out to win, you know, souls and, you know, you're, 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 you're traveling, you're out there, you're, you're, I'd say you're more of an evangelist. If you're a prophet, you better prophesy, we better see it come to pass. If it doesn't happen and you're wrong, lose the title or lose your life. Get out of the way, prophet. <laughs> and people always quote this. I hear people all the time. We know a prophet is great when he, we see what he says has come to pass. You know, people always quote that scripture. I just, I just laugh. I just laugh. I sit there and laugh. I'm like, hmm. I've been doing this so long. I've been doing so much of it. Hundreds and hundreds of things we prophesied have come true. They've manifest specific things that had, no one had any way of knowing that they could ever happen. And they just happened. And they were created out of nothing. I have some scriptures I wanted to read uh, based on prophecy. I think it's right that I, that I do that right now before we finish this. Surely the Lord God does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servant, the prophets, or the prophet of the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who then can but prophesy? Amos 3, 7 and 8. What that means is the voice of the Lord speaks first and the people are supposed to echo it. But God said clearly, I will do nothing unless I first talk to my prophet. And he declares it. This is powerful. To say the least, Hosea 12, 13 says, By a prophet the Lord brought them, the Israelites, out from Egypt. And by a prophet they were preserved and blessed. Protected, blessed. They flourished, they, they lived well, they, they were blessed by God, by the prophesying of the prophet. And there's another scripture on that. Ezra 6.14, it's a little further down here. This is, in, this is in one of my books on prophecies over Kenya. And I took the cover off so I can easily just have this straight to read it. But this is my own sample copy here. We sold out of many printings of this. We need to go back to reprint on many. All these books. I have another whole book I did on the Office of the Prophet, Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest of the Office of the Prophet. Long title, but that's what it is. We're going to go to reprint on this. You'll be able to get this in upcoming days. And Prophetic Keys to Successful Living on the, topic, the Topics of Success in Life with the foreword written by Archbishop Harrison Nanga. This is a fabulous resource book that I've written. It took me a lot to write this book. It's just out of this world. You need a copy of this. Write to me. Mention. Just text me the word book to plus two five four seven zero six one six four one nine one. Text book 
textbook to the number there that you see on the screen and we'll let you know about the books and how you can get them. Uh, if you like prayer, you can type prayer to the same number. If you'd like to be a partner, type partner. Interested in partnership and send a message to that number. From everywhere, plus 254. You need that also for WhatsApp. The plus 254-706-164-191. But in Ezra 6.14, it says, They built and prospered through the prophesying of the prophet. 2 Chronicles 20.20 20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established, of course. But believe his prophets, and you'll prosper, and you'll succeed in things. Joshua 1.8, meditate in God's word, the word, the word again, day and night. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua 1.8. Psalm 29, verse 4, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. I look at these scriptures here. You see my name here? Prophecies for, and this is a book over the nation for this season, and I had 66 prophecies in here, and then my name is here. You see what it is? Thomas Manton IV. It's okay to put doctor because I'm have my, my, I'm a doctor of, in divinity, on the education side, and I'm not a medical doctor, but that's, uh, it's okay to call me doctor or doctor, fine. You call me prophet, it's just a basis of recognition of the function, the anointing I carry and what I do. Hakuna, hakuna Matata, I mean, that's what it is. So my name, Thomas Manton IV, that's good enough for me. Another scripture. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Oh, my God. You know, the scripture goes on to say, the voice of the Lord will just change everything for the better. He spoke, said, let there be light, and there was light in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. 1, 3, excuse me. And God, in the beginning, there was God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and so in the third verse, Genesis 1, 3, it says, And then God said, Let there be light, and then there was light. Powerful scripture in 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. said, No true prophecy ever came by the impulse of man, but men were moved by the Holy Spirit, and they spoke forth words they heard directly from God. It didn't come by the desire or the impulse of man, or men, or men's desires, or men's thoughts. But men, holy men of God, the King James says, were moved by the Holy Ghost, and they spoke forth words that they heard directly from God. This is the prophetic function. So a few scriptures there on that, and then in this book there's 66 prophecies over the nation of Kenya. This is a phenomenal book. Uh, we, we sold out of this, but you could actually ask for this, and if you'd like to become a partner, look, the inside cover is all color of our uh, DVD albums. Now, DVDs are not the thing we probably can release these in digital, but these videos are fabulous. Anyway, I, I don't want to talk about it because it, it's so much work to me to think to have these available, but they, many of them are available and a few more we need to put out there. So, uh, again, because they've all sold out. There's a book I have. I don't even have it on the desk here right now. I don't know why I should have this in my pile of books that I've written. The Benefits of Excellence, The Focus Factor, Success Strategies, uh, The Laws of Success here, which is also going to reprint. Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest Through the Office of the Prophet, as I mentioned. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. I have a book called, I called Healing the Soul of the Society, also sold out. And we need to uh, go to reprint on that. It's 250 pages with 250 prophecies in just that one book. It's, it's out of this world. And God spoke about the things he wants to see change in the society, exposing corruption in the church, in the world, in the government, in the political systems, in the society. 
and uh, positive things that he wants to see happen, movements that he wants to invoke to see happen. That is a fabulous book. I must get that into reprint. My work is too much. I really pray for uh, journalistic people that can help me with uh, the publishing, the recreation and the creation of many of my books to release to the world. And then experts in web and social media and experts in media and television production and experts in administration, which we need, we need so much of. Without great uh, leadership in administration, also the work uh, falters. You don't, you don't get as far as you could get. And all of these things are so necessary. I pray it happens for you also in your vision. And I want to say something a bit... Uh, uh, specific I want to say something specific that as you become a partner of this anointing and this work you'll be blessed in those ways if you just listen if, thanks. if you just listen alone great I pray you get blessed but we need to have relationships I couldn't read what that said. What was that? Was that about YouTube? Yeah, I'll do that. Let me do it now. Okay, everybody needs to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Can we put it on the screen now? The banner for that? YouTube.com forward sign at DR Thomas Manton. The Thomas Manton alone wasn't available. It didn't work, so I wish it did. But on Facebook, it's easy. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. I like that. PayPal, to give by PayPal, to sow seeds by PayPal, to tithe by PayPal is brilliant. It's just paypal.me, me, meaning my page, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. That's it. My website is thomasmanton.com. Very simple. Easy to remember. M-A-N-T-O-N. That's my last name, Thomas. You know how to spell that? T-H-O-M-A-S. Like in John chapter 20, Jesus saith unto Thomas. That's how you spell that. And then M-A-N-T-O-N, thomasmanton.com. If you didn't get all of this, remember the website. Type it in your, your, your uh, browser anywhere, in your phone or wherever, on, when you're online. And... Uh, Buy some data bundles for your phone, whatever you got to do, get your Wi-Fi going, be online, and you could watch our YouTube channel. Hit like and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. You know, people always say smash the like button and the subscribe button. Well, I, 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 I don't know how much I've said that, but I'm being reminded today. We must say that often. Uh, YouTube is great because it's just straight to the video, straight to the point. And I don't, I don't like long introductions and like dead space. I get right to it. I want to get right into it. Like today. Praise the Lord. I'm Thomas Rand IV. This is what I'm going to speak about. Let's get into it. We start from the first three seconds. Boom. We're in the message. I hate dead space. Wasted time. Even on online things when I look at pages and stuff, I don't like white space. I don't like, I like to fill it in with colors. Graphics, images, and text, tight like that. It's all there, right to the point, all together. All these white spaces and gaps and all that. Do you know sometimes I even take whole paragraphs and I jam them together and I put the last line. I used to do that a lot. I'd click the last line up to the line to just condense the space instead of skipping all the... I know when you're writing a letter, you're supposed to do a paragraph, skip a line, it's proper. But I like when it's all together and I can just read it straight through in one shot. So I don't like filler, wasted time, wasted space, unnecessary things. Let's get right to the point and get into it. All the testimonies I'm sharing, all the things I'm saying by the Spirit of the Lord are meaningful, are applicable, relevant revelations, relevant revelations for you to apply in your life. And you'll, as you do them, you'll see the blessings of God, I'm telling you. You know, there's time in life you just need God to bless you, as I said before, not just to be merciful to you. 
Just because you're surviving, you're not dead, you're not broken, you're not so messed up, you're kind of slightly okay, that doesn't mean you're living the blessed life. Let me, let me help you with that. That's not the blessed life. The blessed life is abundance. I mean supernatural suddenlies, relevant revelations. Isn't that great? That's a powerful thing, RR. And supernatural suddenlies, SS, RRSS. Supernatural suddenlies of things, just things happening, miracles happening. Boom, favor coming, boom. People giving you things you prayed about for a long time, it just shows up. That's the blessed life. We're not called just to survive or to strive. We're called to flourish and thrive to be blessed in abundance. And that, that's part of the Dominion Tribe's genre of thought, mantra of meaning, to thrive, to flourish in life, the Dominion lifestyle. And that's the name of our ministry. I got it from heaven. It came from heaven like a carved jewel. From heaven it fell out of the sky and hit the earth when I was in uh, Belgium at the Huguenots, uh, the missionary, the Huguenots that were there. Centuries ago, I was on the property and I fell into an open vision and I saw the name of the ministry coming. <sighs> Hitting the earth, it shook the earth when it hit down. It was like a giant carved diamond that was 20 feet long by six feet high, a wide across with the word dominion in it. I love dominion. It's from the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. 26 talked about we're called to have dominion. The dominion life is the blessed life. Can you say amen? I should almost change the title of this a little bit, but I'll leave it, I'll leave it as it is, but I've covered so many uh, applicable, applicable principles that are good for everybody, not just in a particular nation. But uh, glory to God. So you've been listening to the Lord talk through his prophet here. Get busy about applying these things to your life and you're going to see the blessings of God coming. I'm not done, but I'll pause here. We'll pick it up another time and continue in this flow for the sake of time and everything else and logistics and whatever else we're doing next. I have some other things to attend to. But the Lord is really serious about all this your reason for living, your mission, how you operate, your obedience to the word, your motivation for doing things, your heart attitude, your life, your obedience, living a principled uh, existence for fulfilling the plan and purpose of God. It's of utmost importance. I, I found this scripture that I got so burdened because I think I've spoken a while here and I haven't covered it all, but we'll stop here and we'll pick it up uh, in, in another session. Nehemiah views the wall in Jerusalem. He looked at the damage and the devastation. God is like that. And he's raised me up to look at things and say, now these things need to be fixed. Things need to be built and rebuilt and fixed, some destroyed, some thrown away. Like uh, Nehemiah, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 1, verses 5 to 10, talks about the calling of the prophet Jeremiah, even from his mother's womb. But in the 10th verse, the scripture said, he's called to uh, uproot, destroy, throw down, pluck up, get rid of wrong things, and then build and plant in the weedless garden. Get rid of all the weeds and all the negative, all the problems, and then build a new garden, build new things. That's the, that's the office of the prophet. That's the governmental grace of the office of the prophet. And we'll, I'll be speaking much more on this. I'm loaded, as you can tell. I have so much more to say, but we'll pause it here. I've seen flashes of light, the Holy Ghost, the angels, they're all over this place. Father, I thank you for the miraculous flow that's going to touch everybody. Let them be anointed with fire from today in the new way, from right now in the new way, in Jesus' name. And Lord, come to convict them of everything wrong.
and straighten their world out, straighten their life out. I'm not just praying that you could feel blessed. Oh, I feel the anointing. I feel the touch. I'm happy. Oh, God. Wonderful. That's good. But the Holy Spirit comes with a purpose to do things in your life. And that's really where I'm zeroing in on, aiming at. To shoot the target, which is you. With the arrow of fire from heaven to hit you and say, Now, let this all be fixed that you can walk on great in life and flourish and be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So many thoughts. All right. Uh, we'll depart for the moment. Come back another time, another day. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, but also his power and his prosperity. Become a partner of this work. Again, the details are there. As we go off, there'll also be a, a video. We play the outro from uh, uh, what was spoken about how people can connect with the anointing. We'll play that too on this, and you can, uh, or we'll add it to it in post production if we if we can't get it right now. But the information on how to connect and so is there. How to write to me, how to connect is there. Visit all of our social media channels and uh, share them with everybody. The Lord bless you, especially the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward sign at Dr. Thomas Manton. That's the direct link that goes right to the page. Like and subscribe to that. Join it and also share the link. You can copy the URL of that. Send it in your WhatsApp to all your friends and share it. Put it in your status. Take a video we've done there and see if you can copy it as a short video and find the ways to do that that you can share. When you share good things with other people, God will bless you for that because you're sowing seed, even if it's sharing the word of God with somebody else, a message from the Lord with somebody else. You're sowing a good seed. So do it in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you all. I love you. Talk to you in the next one. Make it a great day. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.